and welcome to another Spectrum Geeks video. My name is Dale. In this video, you join me quite excited at the early hours of the morning. It's like Christmas. All of my Starlink stuff arrived yesterday. So in this video, I'm gonna unbox it and set it up and talk to you about the costs involved. So apologies for the background. There's obviously boxes and everything everywhere. I've recently moved house, which you would have seen from some of the other videos. And currently we're kind of temporarily been using um, a 4G router to try and get internet access for both myself and my wife and the family to work from. That's actually not been working too bad, but not give us quite the bandwidth that we need. So I'll just do a quick speed test to kind of set the expectations. So can we use in Smarty? And there is a cell tower not too far away from here. We're getting about 18 down and two meg up um, in an optimal situation. So I'll just see this run the moment so here you got 18.7 megabits per second down and a little bit better than usual today to finish and 3.36 megabits per second upload which that's the best I've seen actually normally it's around 1 1.2 megabits per second but anyway so we always knew that um, we weren't going to get BT here, so it's a bit of a rural area, and the BT um, fiber is non existent, so you can get it over copper. And it was again about 18 down and about three meg up, but you had to enter into a 24 month contract. Didn't really want to do that because it's unknown if fiber is ever going to get here, so I decided it was going to be expensive. But because we really need internet because we both work from home and what we do, we try and get something a little bit more robust. Hopefully Starlink is going to provide that and we will do a test in a moment. So the reason I'm covering some of this stuff is in the videos I looked at for Starlink in the UK, people hadn't really covered all of the cost and everything involved. So I thought I'd just go through um, what I've ordered, why I've ordered it, and um, then you guys will know for your reference if you want to get it. So obviously Starlink itself, which is in the massive box, um, is the most expensive piece. So that is um, 383 pounds and 33 pence plus 20% VAT here in the UK. So 460 pounds for the main Starlink unit. That's the hardware cost. Shipping is included in that. And then it's about um, 75 to 80 pounds per month uh, in terms of the fees. I'll put a little note here once I've just clarified the cost because I don't have that to hand. But for how I want to use Starlink, I needed to buy some extra pieces. So Starlink itself comes with just um, a wireless um, access point really built into the router. So there's no method um, to connect that via Ethernet to an existing network. So I wanted that, which is what this little box is just here, which we'll look at in a moment. Uh, and that little Ethernet adapter is £29.17 plus the VAT. And then for best operational, really, I'm going to mount this to the wall. So I bought their long wall mount bracket. If you're sure you're not going to have your satellite um, knocked over on the ground or you know, by animals or wind or whatever, you're probably not going to need this. But for me, optimal location for both safety and good line of sight to the sky, you bought this um, wall mount and that was £29.17 plus VAT. So on top of the money, I, the 460 I paid for Starlink itself, another 95 pounds, including VAT, for accessories as well. So um, what we do is I'll open up the adapter first. We'll take a quick look at that, how that's gonna connect in. Quick look at the wall bracket. Then we'll unbox the Starlink. Then it's gonna to start to get a bit lighter. I'm gonna do a temporary setup on the patio to see how all this works. It's basically you've got 30 days from the day it ships um, to test it and then send it back if you want um, your money back. In terms of shipping times actually, accessories came pretty quickly. Um, they came within eight days of ordering and then the Starlink itself took 19 days from the date of ordering. So, um, and the other thing is it's not clear to me if you could really order it before being at the location you want to use it unless you're going to pay extra per month for the RV option where you can then move it around as long as you've got the coverage. So I waited till I moved in here 
um, to order it and we've been just say, just using the 4G temporarily for now. Right, so let's crack open the first box. First there's a little kind of pull tab on the side like you get of an Amazon package. Just pop that open, let's see what's inside. So we get a little piece of card, which is basically instructions on how to set it up. So the Ethernet adapter, I guess will go in line at the back of the wireless access point, I'm guessing. So this is it. This is unplugged from here. Yeah, okay. So what's that about? A meter length of cable with a um, mini USB connector on the back, it looks like. And then another mini USB on the inside, which I guess this must tap in line. And then an Ethernet adapter or an Ethernet connection at the end there. I'm assuming it's going to be um one gig per second but we'll find out once we've installed that not really much information available uh, on the starlink website about this stuff and also the accessories you can't buy them from the shop until you've signed up and actually placed an order so it was not really that easy to see the costs right so let's have a look at the long wall mount adapter so again a little pull away strip as with the ethernet adapter box Starlink is kind of like no fuss packaging, really. Okay, so there's a, a back trim wall plate piece, a template for drilling, which is going to be quite handy because I don't particularly like going up on ladders and drilling things, but um, things seem to have to be done. Some uh, information booklet. on the mounting of the adapter bracket. Uh, mounting hardware, so not amount of cable clips stuff, that's good. A little pouch thing of some sort. silicone I guess that's to patch the hole up that you've drilled and then the mounting bracket itself so yeah I guess that's going to mount on the wall where's that bit of plastic on already just down here so I think that mounts on the wall like this this plastic cap will go over the top where then the cable feeds into and then the Starlink satellite dish pops into this hole and then will be mounted so, because it's going to be mounted up near the eaves, that's why I went for the, the longer version. So yeah, should be pretty cool. Oh, and there's one other thing in here. Massive um, concrete lug bolts. Um, so this, so you don't need um, rule plugs, I guess. Just mounting direct into the brickwork with this. Right. Now for the Starlink box itself. I'm going to put this um, down on the floor. I can lift it up onto the table to show you what's inside. Okay, so let's unbox the Starlink itself. So inside the box, there's some plastic packaging, which I'll just pop to this side. And the first thing we see here is the mount. So this is the ground mount that if you were going to have to mount it on the ground, you can. There's some holes to kind of spike it and secure it to the ground. So just rest that there for a moment. A little piece of plastic packaging which protects the back of the Starlink satellite dish. Then the dish itself, which is rather heavy. And then there's a cable attached to the end. So we'll just grab this out. So 
there's rather a large amount of um, cable there. We'll put a note down below to show how much cable there is. Um, obviously that's going to be important for the routing and you can see on the end here is that connector that I don't think it is a um, mini USB but maybe maybe it is but that will sit inside the mount somehow I'm not sure I don't want to break it um, there are some little cutouts. Ah. There we go. Don't have to get knocked over. Then there is some cardboard instructions just in here. Basically, it says not to move um, this by hand and where obviously you want to position it. Obviously you need to provide power and information about the little uh, access pointers in here and the fact you need to download the Starlink app to then look up in the sky to see best positioning. So again, we will look at that in a moment. And then a the couple of final things in a box. So this is the Starlink um, router and access point. On the end here, we just have a three pin, like the Mickey, what I call the Mickey Mouse adapter connector and the power for the dish. So again, no ethernet on here whatsoever. And then finally here in the UK, the three pin plug with the Mickey Mouse head adapter just there. And some regulatory notices. So that's it. Um, I'm gonna wait till it's a little bit lighter outside and we'll pop outside. I'll show you the Starlink app. We'll try and find the best orientation and then we'll do a test setup of Starlink and see if the internet connection is indeed any good. Okay, so we're outside and I've set up a variety of lights. Hopefully you can see me. I position the Starlink um, satellite just over here. And now we're gonna start out the setup. So I've got the access point precariously positioned for a window in the utility room. That's not gonna be permanent because the cable's pretty thick and uh, can't really close the window again. Um, but let's see about starting our Starlink setup. So open up the Starlink app and we log ourselves in. Go to start setup, set the dish that we have is that one and let's check for obstructions so i'm going to stand over here where the setup's going to be so we can check the location so i'm not sure how well you can see me now stood where the satellite dish is i'm going to point the camera up Check for any obstructions. Okay, so here's the view results. You can see on the screen here whilst it's um, loading where you could shop for mounts and things. If the location's no good. Okay, so this is a great place. So let's set things up just here. So have a location okay so let's go turn the power on and we'll probably move the camera so you can see any dish action okay so we've got power on let's uh, move things over a bit you can see the dish here now Press next on the app. I need to join the Wi-Fi network. Okay, let's position the camera here so you guys can see that. Here we go, it's doing something. Let me 
can see that. Okay, so it wants me to create a network. Okay, so it says that setup is complete and we're online. So it's looking basically just straight up there like a table. Um, so let's do a speed test in um, the same the same speed test app that we used previously. Let's see how we get on. So it says Starlink. Let's go. So we had about 18 down before, didn't we? And three up. Well, that's much better already. So not quite as fast as I was expecting, to be honest. But definitely an improvement of what we had. Oh, the dish is realigning itself there, wasn't it? Okay, that's interesting. Let's do another test now that it's moved a bit. Oh wow, that's a bit better. And third time lucky. It may even work better when um, it's properly mounted, but I want to use it for a, you know, about a week and then decide if it's going to work how we want it to and then can properly mount it but that's pretty quick 247 megabytes down eighteen up okay so i'm going to continue to test this out for about a week but then you'll see me back here in a moment to give you kind of my little update hopefully then we get it mounted up on the roof just over here and connect up that Ethernet adapter to plug it in to the main network and uh, we'll see how we go from there. So don't go anywhere, we'll be right back in just a moment. Okay, so it's been uh, about four days I think now since we had Starlink set up on the patio. I'm actually going to do the part two for fitting it on the um, roof because this video is already quite long. So my current observations are the system works pretty well. Um, have done a little bit of gaming on there. Seem to work fine even with the latency. Uh, video calls as well, working fine as well. Tried Teams and Zooms and FaceTime. In general, I think it's working really well. Um, in terms of performance though, I have noticed that there does seem to be a bit of a variance in performance, but I can't quite yet decide if that is an issue with um, my house interfering with the Wi-Fi signal because I actually don't think the um, uh, the Wi-Fi router is actually that good and obviously it's, it's a bit difficult with where I have it positioned right now so I've been doing some tests in the morning and the evening kind of stood quite near the um, access point and the, the performance does seem to vary so the other thing we'll find out is obviously after I've mounted it on the roof and the palava will be involved in that I will then route that cable in into the Ethernet adapter and then put it into my rack and then be using my um, Unify wireless access points, which uh, I'm happy with how they perform. I know um, how they tend to perform and then that'll be a better test of the performance. So check back in uh, for part two of this video to talk about performance. But in terms of the performance that I've noticed is in the morning, it seems to be pretty good. I get a performance similar to what I've been getting when we did that first initial test, somewhere around 90 megabits per second down, varying up to about 190 megabits down, depending uh, obviously on cloud cover and stuff. And then in general, getting around kind of 18 megabits per second up. That's always first thing in the morning. As we go through the day and towards the evening, the performance does seem to decrease. I'm not sure if that's because more people are using it, if they're raised in a slightly different position or what, 
I don't know. And I haven't noticed the antenna moving at all um, since their first initial setup, which some people in the US I've noticed, they say that the antenna moves. Maybe it's just the location um, here in the UK that things work a bit better. But in the evening, I'm seeing only about 30 meg down, which obviously is significantly less. And I'm stood in the same place every time and getting probably similar at uh, low speed, 16 to 18. But again, I'm not sure if that is the uh, Starlink service itself or other issues, because again, that access point is not in the best position. Um, there's a boiler nearby and other things that might uh, disrupt the signal, especially if it's running or not running, which um, think about it. it probably is running in both times. But again, I'm standing in the same place to try and not skew the results of how the access point is working. But check out um, the next video when I will get up on the ladder and mount it. And well, obviously, assuming I don't kill myself in the process and see if the performance is any more stable using Unify stuff. So hope this video has helped give you a little bit of introduction as to sort of what it is in the box, the costs here in the UK and the performance that can be expected. And in part two, we'll see if the performance is a bit more reliable mounted up in the sky. So there's no obstruction anyway, but definitely no obstruction to the sky. And if it works better using the various wife assets for it to have around the house. So like this video if you have done, appreciate it was a long one. Thanks for sticking through and tell the next one we'll do part two. Take care of yourself. Bye.